All right, so I'm, I'm Daniel Roth. I'm the product manager at Microsoft for Blazor. Blazor is our web UI framework based on the trusted .NET platform uh, to enable greater productivity, performance, and security when building modern web apps. These days, web apps use a lot of different approaches to deliver the best uh, UI experiences. Uh, sometimes you want to render from the server. You render a page in response to a request, so it loads really fast and so that you can easily index it. In other cases, your UI might be best handled from the client. Like you might want that rich interactivity and access to client capabilities. With Blazor in .NET 8, we're doing work to uh, enable you to use Blazor's convenient component model to handle all of your web UI needs from both the client, where Blazor shines today, and also from the server. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So this application, this recipe app, is built entirely using Blazor. Uh, it has a list of recipes on the home page. We can look at recipes and see their ingredients and instructions and so forth. And uh, yeah, it's almost lunchtime, so these pictures are making me very hungry. Uh, but let's look at what this app uh, is like in the browser dev tools to see what it is doing. So I'm going to refresh the home page. Now, on the home page of this app, this is a Blazor app, but if I filter for just the web sockets, uh, sorry, for uh, WebAssembly, there's no WebAssembly being downloaded for this Blazor application. If I go to WebSockets, there's also no WebSocket connections. There's no JavaScript even being downloaded for this app. That's because the entire app is being fully rendered server-side, uh, doing server-side rendering. So Blazor in .NET 8, we're adding support for server-side rendering using your Blazor components. I'll show you what that looks like in the code. So this is the, the project. This is actually part of the, um, like the full ASP.NET Core GitHub repo. It's a sample app that's tucked in there. Um, let's look at the pages for the home page and the recipe details. So each of these pages is set up as, uh, well, they're, they're Blazor components, and they're set up as routable endpoints, like in the server sense as of, a, of an endpoint. So a request comes into the server, that gets routed to the corresponding Blazor component, and then it does a full HTML render to, to the response. So server-side rendering with Blazor components. It's just that, that simple. You author your components exactly the same way as you would do in Blazor today. Uh, we can do form handling as well. So let's go back to the home page, and I'll do a little search here for some chocolate recipes. That was a, a form get request so that we could get the chocolate recipes. There's another form down at the bottom of each recipe where we can submit our reviews. You know, tastes great, and we'll submit that. And then if we look at the bottom, we can see that our review was added. So that was a form post request. If I submit the form without any data, then we also get uh, validation as well. So validation is working with these forms. How are these forms implemented? Well, this is the uh, recipe details page component. If we scroll down a bit, we can find that star rating reviews component at the bottom. I'm just going to go to its definition so we can see how it's, how it's done, how it's implemented. And if you've used Blazor before, you might recognize these components. These are the built-in Blazor edit form and input components for rendering a form. And these components, when you're using server-side rendering, they will bind the request data, they'll validate the data, run validation, and then, be, uh, then call your on-submit handler all from the server. So you can do form handling server-side as well. Okay, so that's server-side rendering with Blazor in .NET 8. Now, because we're using Blazor, we can actually start to enhance the user experience of this app. Because it's doing server-side rendering, every time I do a navigation, right now it's doing a full page load. You may see this like little browser blip while it loads the page, and that's, that's standard for server-side rendered applications. It's a little bit, a little jarring, a little, little, little jolt there. Also, you may have seen when I submitted this form, let me do another one so you can see it again, that uh, it's doing a full page load, so I lose the scroll position. We end up back up at the, the top of the page. But we can improve that experience by adding just a little bit of, of Blazor uh, implemented client-side logic. So I'm going to go back to the app, and let's go to the main layout component. And at the bottom of the layout, I'm just going to uncomment the Blazor script and just I uh, didn't mean to completely restart, but we'll restart the application. Could have just applied that. Uh, so this will then enhance the way the navigation is done in the application and also the way forms are handled. 
We'll just wait for that to come up. When navigation occurs, it will still do server-side rendering. The page will still render a full HTML response, but Blazor will intercept that request and grab the return HTML and then intelligently update the DOM so it doesn't have to do a full page load. Similar thing with a form request. When you submit the form request, it's still gonna render from the server with this application, but when the HTML response comes back, Blazor will then intelligently update that into the, the DOM. Let's see how our, our build taking just a second here, do a little dance on the stage while the, the rebuild happens. Yeah, because this is part of the full ASP.NET Core repo, sometimes it takes a second to, to get the rebuild. There it goes. Okay, so now, wait for the browser to pop up, and we should see an enhanced navigation experience. Any second, Visual Studio. I believe in you. There it goes. Okay, so now as I click around on the pages, you'll notice that, that that little blip of the browser, it's gone, the navigations are fast, they're silky smooth. If I scroll down to the bottom and submit another review, you know, great, whatever, we can add that review and we no longer lose the scroll position. So that's enhanced navigation and form handling. Now some pages in an app like this might need to do long running async tasks in order to, to, to render the page. Like for these recipes, maybe we're getting those from a database or maybe they're coming from an API call and that might take some time. Normally you have to wait for all those tasks to complete for the page to render. So you might get a delay. Like if I go into this app, let's go find where we're getting the recipes here, where I'm calling get recipes, and I'm gonna add a, a simulated database call by just adding a task.delay. So it's not a real database call, but let's all pretend, work with me here. Um, so now we have a, you know, we're gonna get those recipes and it's gonna take a second, we'll let that apply to the app. So now if I like navigate away and then click back, ready, click, there's a one 1,000, then the page renders. Or if I refresh the page, click, one 1,000, now the page uh, loads. That's because we're waiting for all those, that database query, the async tasks to complete. But with Blazor and .NET 8, we can improve that experience using a new feature called streaming rendering. Streaming rendering is a form of progressive enhancement where we allow the page to immediately render before, while those async tasks are running, and we put placeholder content on the page while you're waiting. And then when the tasks complete, Blazor renders the component again, new HTML, but it comes in the same response connection. It's not a new connection, there's no web sockets. Blazor receives that additional payload and then just updates the DOM again so that it seamlessly updates. Let me, let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go to the home page of this app and I'm gonna uncomment this streaming rendering uh, attribute to enable streaming rendering on the home page. And let's go ahead and rebuild that. Now you may notice on the, the home page we have a little bit of rendering logic. When the page initially renders, if we don't have those recipes yet, then we will render this placeholder, loading recipes dot dot dot. Oh, go back, let's see the rest of the code. And then when the database query completes, this component will actually render again from the server and we'll get all the recipes rendered onto the page. Okay, so now if I refresh the page, let's refresh, you see loading recipes, dot, 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 and then a second later, the database query is done and the page seamlessly updates. So that's streaming rendering. It makes your app uh, feel more responsive. You get pixels on the screen much, much faster. So our app is feeling more like a single page app, like a spa, even though it's still doing completely server-side rendering. Okay, now I'm gonna add, let's, let's add some like rich client interactivity to this app stuff that Blazor was, was born for. So we have this submit recipe page with a recipe editor that we can use to add recipes to the application. And I want this to be a really nice, sophisticated UI. Like I wanna be able to upload an image for my recipe. And instead of just showing the file name, I want that to actually show like a preview of the image. And we have this recipe editor where I'd like to be able to you know, add all my ingredients. Right now, if I click this add button, doesn't do anything. I want this to let me like build up a list and I can re reorder it using drag and drop and all that stuff. Why isn't it working yet? That's because the page is still doing server-side rendering. It's not set up for interactivity yet, but let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back to the application and let's go find that submit recipe page. There it is. And I'm gonna add a render mode to this page. In this case, we're gonna use, I'm gonna get this going, but we're gonna use Bla uh, server render mode, which is Blazor server. So all of the UI interactions are now gonna happen over a Blazor server-based WebSocket connection. So we can get all that interactivity. It's being driven from, from the server, but now interactively. Okay, so let's go to submit recipe. And now if I try to upload a picture, let's do the oatmeal. Ah, I get my 
image preview. My client side logic is kicking into gear. If I add some ingredients, like let's add some flour and a couple of eggs and of course some uh, pickles or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can now toggle between imperial units and metric units and we can drag and drop things. We're getting all the great interactivity that Blazor is known for. So that's now, that's now an island of interactivity in what is otherwise still a server side rendered app. Like if I go back to the home page, and let's bring up those browser dev tools. Let's remove all the filters. Let's refresh the homepage and see what we got. Like, do we have any WebSocket connections on the homepage? No, nothing yet. But when I go to submit recipe, aha, now the Blazor server WebSocket connection gets set up. Uh, it's the page is now interactive. When the user leaves that page, that connection can be freed up on, along with all of its corresponding server resources. So a little island of Blazor server in my server side rendered app. Uh, we can use Blazor WebAssembly too. We just change this render mode from server to WebAssembly. And we'll go ahead and restart that. Now what's interesting about using WebAssembly is normally that requires like a separate project. In, in this version, in .NET 8, we have, uh, we're working on a single project model where your Blazor WebAssembly code and your server code can coexist in a single project thanks to multi-targeting. Like we'll build the same project twice, once for server, once for client. Okay, let's bring up those browser dev tools to see what happens with Blazor WebAssembly. I'm gonna just gonna clear the site data to make sure I don't have anything pre-cached. And now if we refresh the home page, okay, do we have any WebAssembly yet? Not yet, I go to the submit recipe page, and then the .NET WebAssembly runtime gets downloaded and cached for this page. If I have other pages in the app, well, it'll be cached so it can just be reused and doesn't have to be downloaded again. So I'm able to add interactivity. It still works, like we can show that this is functional. Let's pick a, you know, this marshmallowy picture. Yep, it's all functional. Uh, we can add interactivity using Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly on a per component or per page level. That's pretty cool. Um, but wouldn't it be even better if we could decide on that render mode automatically, like at runtime? Like maybe we do something clever where we start users out with Blazor server where we need interactivity and, and we, because that loads fast, right? They can get the page going really quick, but we download the .NET WebAssembly runtime in the background so that it can then be cached and used on future visits. Then if the app detects that the runtime is already available, it can switch to using Blazor WebAssembly instead. That sounds like that might be pretty nice. Let's switch this render mode from WebAssembly to auto, the auto render mode. This will, oh, I need an O on my auto. No, not, not that kind of O, not that kind of O. This, uh, <laughs> this will allow the app now to decide at runtime which render mode to use. It will start with Blazor server and then flip, flip to Blazor WebAssembly if it sees that the .NET WebAssembly runtime is already available. I think we can get rid of some of these other tabs. Okay, browser dev tools one more time. Let's clear out any Blazor WebAssembly stuff that might have already been downloaded. Move our filters, refresh. Okay, on the home page, do we have any WebAssembly? No WebAssembly. Do we have any WebSockets? No WebSockets. But if we browse the submit recipe, okay, so now we've got the Blazor server WebSocket connection going, so we're interactive. But at the same time, in the background, aha, we are sneaking down that .NET WebAssembly runtime and caching it. Uh, now, which one are we using? We can see that from the browser dev tools. Here we can see that this app is actually running over a WebSocket. So right now it's using Blazor server. But if the user comes back to this app later, let's, let's simulate that by just refreshing the page. Aha, now it has flipped over to using Blazor WebAssembly instead. It's running from the client. We can save on all those, uh, those server resources. So with Blazor and .NET 8, you can use Blazor's component model to get the best of client and server for building your, your web UI. So that's full stack web UI development with Blazor in .NET 8. That's just some of the, the new stuff that's coming to, to Blazor and the rest of the .NET stack in the .NET 8 time, time, time frame. If you haven't already tried it out, I encourage you to download the latest .NET 8 preview and give it a spin. That's what I got for you. 30 awesome. seconds left. Awesome, give it up for Daniel Roth, everybody.